now adjourn. The Honourable Member for Regina Leuven. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The province of Saskatchewan is currently struggling with a weak economy and a lagging job market. Earlier this week, Statistics Canada reported that over the past year, Saskatchewan was the only province other than Newfoundland and Labrador to suffer from a drop in wholesale trade. A major component of wholesale trade in Saskatchewan and of employment in Regina is steel production. Since being elected, I've advocated strongly for the use of Canadian-made steel in public infrastructure projects as well as in pipeline projects over which the federal government has regulatory authority. Canadian-made steel is much cleaner and safer than steel imported from offshore. Thanks in part to political pressure, Kinder Morgan decided uh, to build most of the Trans Mountain expansion using steel pipe manufactured in Regina. Now, of course, that project is now in doubt, which has put in doubt the largest contract that would keep Regina's steel mill operating for the coming months and years. The federal government has tried to support that project by offering an indemnity uh, for the Trans Mountain expansion, not just to Kinder Morgan, but also to other potential investors in the project. A concern that I have is that those other investors might try uh, to cut costs and to cut corners by instead uh, building the Trans Mountain expansion with pipe imported from offshore. Uh, this would, of course, uh, increase safety concerns about the project. It's also the case that manufacturing a ton of steel and shipping it here from China emits five times as much carbon as manufacturing it in Regina. For those environmental and safety reasons, as well as to support Canadian jobs, I have suggested that the federal government should make its indemnity for the Trans Mountain expansion conditional upon any potential investor in the project honouring the existing commitment to use Canadian-made steel. When I put that question to the Minister of Natural Resources earlier this week, his response was to say, well, the contract for steel has already been signed, and that's a good thing for Regina. And Mr. Speaker, that answer uh, certainly is correct if Kinder Morgan uh, continues uh, to complete the Trans Mountain expansion. But that answer does not address the scenario which the, the government itself has raised of other investors coming in and taking over the project. And Mr. Speaker, it's for that reason that I would like to see the federal government use its indemnity as leverage to try to ensure that any prospective investor in the Trans Mountain expansion would honour the existing uh, contract with Evraz Steel uh, to build the pipeline uh, expansion using steel uh, manufactured in Canada, which of course supports Canadian jobs, uh, gives us uh, assurance about safety, and also emits far less carbon than bringing in the material from offshore. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, uh, I and the people of Regina are very curious to hear from the Minister of Natural Resources as to whether, in fact, he's prepared uh, to use the indemnity in that way. Thanks very much. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member for Regina Louvan for his question this evening. It is both uh, timely and important. Uh, because, as the Minister of Natural Resources noted earlier this week, the contracts for this pipeline expansion have already been awarded and the economic development benefits for the project will be felt right across the country, including in the member's opposite's home province of Saskatchewan, which I'm sure he's very pleased to hear about this evening. It will include a contract for almost 75 per cent of the steel or about 250,000 tonnes of pipe coming from Regina. Mr. Speaker, that is one of the reasons 
why this government decided that the Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline is in Canada's national interest because of the thousands of good jobs it will create. But this is not the only reason. As the Minister for Natural Resources have outlined on more than one occasion, that by moving more Canadian oil to export markets, our producers will have greater access to new global markets and higher prices. That could add billions annually to the value of our oil exports. In addition, the construction and operation of the pipeline is expected to generate billions in new federal and provincial government revenues. Those are new tax dollars to pay for our hospitals and our schools, to build new roads and safer bridges in our communities, and to fund our cherished social programs that are outright outreach to every Canadian in this country. All while our government is also making unprecedented investments to enhance environmental protection and Indigenous participation. Investments that include the historic world-leading $1.5 billion ocean protection plan that will strengthen the eyes and ears of the Canadian Coast Guard, enhance our response capabilities, and build meaningful partnerships with Indigenous people. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has called the TMX project a vital strategic interest to Canada, and he instructed the Minister of Finance to initiate formal financial discussions with the pipeline's proponent, Kinder Morgan. Last week, the Finance Minister updated Canadians on the status of those discussions by noting that our government is prepared to indemnify the project against any financial losses and derives from BC Premier Hogan's attempts to delay and obstruct this project. As the Finance Minister also said, this indemnification would allow Kinder Morgan to finish what they started and, what they re and that they receive federal and BC approval to do. What's more, our government is prepared to extend the indemnification to another interested party should Kinder Morgan decide not to proceed with the expansion, and we will make sure that the support we provide is sound and fair and beneficial to all Canadians. We want and expect to see this pipeline built, and we are doing so with an approach that is sound and sensible for Canada and for all Canadians. I want to thank the member for his question, and I certainly want to thank the members of our government that have worked very hard in leading this initiative to where it is today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Regina Leuven. Well, thanks uh, very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I do appreciate the response uh, from the Parliamentary uh, Secretary. Uh, she made the point uh, that the government uh, views the Trans Mountain expansion as a major source of jobs in Canada and that it will create jobs in Regina uh, to the extent that it's built uh, with steel pipe manufactured at Everest. And that's exactly what I'm trying to ensure. Now, the Parliamentary Secretary uh, repeats the answer that the contract has already been signed for Regina Steel, and that's true if we're talking about Kinder Morgan completing the project. However, the Parliamentary Secretary also raised the possibility of extending the indemnity to other investors who might take over the project. And so my question, Mr. Speaker, is in that scenario, would the government make the indemnity conditional on those other investors honouring the existing commitment to use Canadian-made steel? Thank you. The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As has already been indicated, and the member opposite knows, the contract for the pipeline expansion has been awarded, and they have included provisions for almost 75 per cent of the steel, and I believe that's equivalent to about 800 kilometers of pipe that will be produced right in Regina. And I know that is good news for him, as it is for us, and we share his enthusiasm for seeing the project proceed. Mr. Speaker, the Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline 
is in Canada's national interest, and it is part of the sensible approach that includes diversifying our energy market, improving environmental safety, and creating thousands of good middle-class jobs, including good jobs in Indigenous communities as well. What I would say to the member is that regardless of who develops this pipeline, we will always maintain that it will be done in the interests of Canadians and it will be done to the benefit of Canadians.